Hello everyone, this is Rajika Janjala. I am an educator in Academy. You can follow me on Academy Learning app where you can find other courses as well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the helical coil torsion springs. And please rate, review, and share the video, and also subscribe to an Academy YouTube channel. Welcome again to helical coil torsion springs. When a helical coil spring is subjected to end torsion, it is called a helical coil torsion spring. It is usually close wound as is helical coil extension springs, but with negligible initial tension that was given by manufacturing that spring. Right? There are single bodied and double bodied types depicted in the figure. These are double bodied and these are single bodied springs. And uh, as shown in the figure, torsion springs have been configured to apply tors torsion to the coil body in a convenient manner with short hook, hinged straight offset, straight torsion and special end. So to apply the torsional loadings to that helical coil torsion spring, we will use different types of ends. Here you can see special ends, short hook ends, hinged ends and single offset ends, straight torsion ends. Okay. So these types of ends are used to apply the torsional loadings to that helical coil torsion spring in a convenient manner depending upon the type of applications. So now we are going to see the types of loadings acting on the torsion helical springs. So in this figure you can see a helical coil torsion spring which is a commonly used one and here you can see one end of this helical coil torsion spring is fixed here and this is the free end right. So while when we apply the torsion loadings to this helical coil torsion spring as you as by uh, observation you can find the diameter the mean coil diameter of this spring may decreases right so this spring should be designed in a way that it can resist the reduction in the diameter right that's why while manufacturing this helical coil torsion spring these springs are induced with bending loadings okay in contrast to the torsion encountered in helical coil compression and extended spring these the y is in torsion spring is in bending okay so the spring wire in alcohol coil torsion spring is in bending while manufacturing so the springs are designed to win tighter in service as the applied torque increases the inside diameter of the coil decreases that's why we have induced the coil in that spring with the bending loading okay so describing the end location so in this topic we are going to see the specifications of helical coil torsion springs so in specifying a torsion spring the ends must be located relative to each other right the simplest scheme for expressing the initial unloaded location of one end with respect to the other is in terms of an angle given by beta defining the partial turns present in the coil body as np equals to beta by 360s 360 degrees as shown in the figure so here in this figure figure you can see a typical helical coil torsion spring and to specify the ends of this spring we have used beta which is the angle the angle between the one end with respect to the other end as you can observe this end making an angle of beta with the with the fixed end right and the partial turns the number of partial turns present in the coil is given by NP equals to beta by 360. So these the number NP gives us the the partial turns which are the end turns of this helical coil torsion spring. Okay. So the number of body turns NB is the number of turns in the free spring body by count. Okay. The body turn count is related to the initial position angle beta by NB equals to integer plus beta by 360 degrees so integer the integer value is obtained by observations we by neck the by counting the number of turns in that helical coil torsion spring excluding the ends of that spring okay the ends of the springs will be included by the term given by np which is the number of partial turns okay therefore the total number of body turns will be given by nb equals to integer plus np and where np is the number of partial turns okay so we have seen the specifications for this helical coil torsion springs we have beta and the number of the body turns and the number of partial turns present in that helical coil torsion spring bending stress as i said before to resist the, the reduction in the mean coil diameter of the helical coil torsion springs 
the springs are induced with the bending loading right so now we are going to discuss about the magnitude of the bending bending stress developed in the coils of that spring due to the induced bending loading while manufacturing that helical coil torsion springs okay a torsion spring has bending induced in the coils right rather than torsion this means that res residual stresses built in during winding are in the same direction but opposite sign to the working stresses that occur during the use so during the use we apply the torsion loadings and while manufacturing we have applied the bending loadings right and the stresses developed by these two loadings will be of opposite in directions and and the stresses developed by bending while manufacturing are the residual stresses and the working stresses will be the stresses developed due to the torsion loading while in the service okay so the stresses the bending stresses developed in the spring wire while manufacturing are given by the equation sigma equals to k into mc by i where k is the stress correction factor okay so the value of k depends on the shape of the wire cross section and whether the stress is sort is at the inner or outer fiber wall analytically determine the value of k to be for round cross sectional wires given by k equals to 4c square minus c minus 1 by 4c into c minus 1 and k naught equals to 4c square plus c minus 1 by 4c into c plus 1 so these are the stress correction factors used for the calculation of the bending stress or the residual stresses developed in the helical coil torsion springs while manufacturing them where c is the spring index which is the the ratio of mean coil diameter by the diameter of the spring wire right and the subscript i and o refers to the inner and outer fibers okay respectively in the view of the fact that k o is always less than unity we shall use k to estimate the stresses so we are we have to use the value of k for the calculation of the residual stresses the residual bending stresses okay and specifying the bending loading which is given to the helical coil torsion spring while manufacturing right that's why we have to use the ki value to estimate the bending stress developed in the helical coil torsion springs while manufacturing okay when the bending movement is given by m equals to f r and the section modulus i by c which is the ratio of the movement of inertia and the c the uh, radius of the coil we have d cube by 32 right so we ex express the bending equation this equation by substituting these values we get sigma equals to k i by 32 f r by pi d cube this is the value for the the bending stresses developed in the coil of the helical coil torsion springs okay which gives the bending stress for a round wire torsion spring so this value is only for the round wired round cross sectional helical coil torsion springs okay and this stress is a residual stress which was given to the material or the spring wire while manufacturing it so remember this formula which is very important for the calculation of the bending stresses developed in the helical coil torsion springs and thank you